Hello and welcome to this month's Tokyo Treat unboxing and snack inspired illustrations where I'm going to doodle away with my bright and awesome Posca pins and just take inspiration from these snacks. It's gonna be wild. If you don't know what Tokyo Treat is, it's a monthly subscription box for Japanese snacks. Check the link in the description if you want your own box. It's delicious and thank you so much to Tokyo Treat for sending me this box. Okay, let's try some snacks and get creative. So the first snack I see is this Taki and oh my gosh, it is double white chocolate and lemon flavor, which I had to read myself because I can't find the Pocky on the list. Weird. The lemon of this Pocky really takes back the sweetness of the white chocolate, so it's really nice. So after looking at the list of snacks, I realized that yeah, the Pocky was not supposed to be here. It was supposed to be the Kinoko banana flavored snacks. Kinoko are basically Pocky. They're just in cute little mushroom shapes instead. But honestly, I am very thankful I did not get those snacks because I don't like fake banana flavor. And these lemon Pocky were, they were really good. So the inspiration for this Posca pin doodle is the fact that I was supposed to get the Kinoko snacks, but I didn't. At first I was going to have this little mushroom guy holding a Pocky, but I just thought that was just a little too obvious and kind of out of place. Instead of forcing the Pocky into this illustration, I thought I would just simply take inspiration from the fact that these little guys snuck their way out of this box and instead I got Pocky. So I have this cute little mushroom guy running away like, see you later. If you've been watching my Posca pin doodle videos for a while, you know that I try to avoid my black liner because I'm always afraid that it's going to sort of dull out these bright Posca doodles. But honestly, I really like the effect the black pin gave because the vibrant colors are still there. They're still popping. And then the black outline just kind of makes it look like a cartoon and I love it and I might use black too much. That said, I love this little mushroom guy. Our next illustration will be based off of these cheese rice puffs. They are very light and slightly cheesy. A light snack. I'll be honest, inspiration was running a little low at the beginning of this Tokyo treat box. That said, I do like the way this turned out. It's simple and cute, but you will see a common theme later on. I usually just kind of take the treat and then put some eyeballs on it. So basically for this snack, I was really inspired by the fact that it was cheese flavored. A lot of these snacks are supposed to be based off of fruit flavors, but we have a couple of cheese or chocolate things in the mix. So I thought I would just draw from the fact that it's cheese because there are a lot of fruits later on. I do a lot of fruit drawings. I needed to make sure that I did something that wasn't fruit. So because these snacks are just all sorts of different shapes and sizes, I really wanted to draw different kinds of cheese. So that's it. I actually just drew a variety of cheeses with my Posca pins playing around with those bright colors and just giving them faces and overall just keeping it very simple, bold, and colorful. Our next inspiration will be Umaibo, but this time it's cinnamon apple pie flavored. Yum. This is definitely my favorite Umaibo so far. The cinnamon, the apple, just yes. I was feeling very inspired by this snack because like I said, this is the best umaibo we have had so far. Cinnamon apple pie, oh my gosh, it was so good. So I wanted to create a character based off of this snack, someone who was wearing an outfit inspired by the apple pie. And I was immediately inspired by the fact that pies are sort of dress shaped, I think. They have frills, they have fillings. Basically, I'm in love with this character and I hope you are too. <laughs> so the base of her dress is that pie shape and the front sort of chest area is supposed to look like an apple, but I realize now that it sort of just looks like a heart, but that's fine. I made her socks gray to represent a sort of tin foily pan for the pie. I thought that was a cute little detail. And of course we have a little heart tie in her hair. It just kind of ties the whole red together and she's holding some spices because it's cinnamon. Overall, this is one of my top favorite illustrations out of this box. She's just so cute. Ooh, next up we have chocolate mint caramel corn and the packaging is so cute. Just opening this package, I could smell ice cream and they even taste like it. The light green color and chocolate chips are very cute on these snacks too. So obviously I really wanted to do something that was ice cream themed because this snack is ice cream. 
I don't know why I immediately went to making animals out of the tops of these ice creams, but I'm pretty pleased with the results because it's cute. So I'm not going to argue. Something I did struggle with this a lot was wanting to add an outline. I just love the lineless effects you can get with these Posca pins, but I really do think that it just works best with more simple illustrations. This was not one of them, and I do think I probably should have added lines. I'm still struggling with that. But overall, I am really pleased with how these dogs and cat came out. They are just so cute. And it's a lot of fun creating animals and other things out of food because because it's cute. I don't know. I don't know why I said because. It's adorable. Also, let's not even talk about how many times I have said cute or adorable in this one video alone. Help me. Which one would you eat? The dog, the pug, or the cat? Our next snack is Banana Man Marshmallow. All right. The concept and the look of the snack is adorable, but unless you like that fake banana flavor, I wouldn't recommend. Ignoring the mascot on that packaging. So this illustration is pretty basic, I'll admit, though I really like the way it turned out because it goes along with my whole not adding line work to a really simple illustration. This one is very simple, but I really like the way I drew the chocolate and the banana and something about these simple, bold colors and shapes just make things so appealing to me. Oh, appealing, <laughs> get it? Bananas, appealing, it's, it's a good pun, it's a joke. Anyways, so I basically just drew a chocolate-filled banana, nothing special, but I just wanted to play around with chocolate coming out of that banana and just showing a sort of dissection of this banana, having a cut through the middle of it and showing the two pieces and what's inside. I really love illustrations where you have these dissections with different pieces. It's something I wanna do and play around with more in the future. But for now, we have a banana with chocolate and it seems very happy to be cut in half and spilling its chocolate innards. Maybe it's his fetish, I don't know. Next we have this honey apple hard candy. It's a honey apple hard candy and it's pretty good. For whatever reason, my inspiration on this one came from the fact that apples can be turned into a lot of different things. Apples are very similar to potato chips where they just have so many varieties. You can turn them into so many things and they're always so dang delicious. So what I ended up drawing for this guy was an apple at the bottom of the page, looking up terrified at all of these different things that people have done to it or its friends, thinking, oh cool, my friends have been pulverized into juice. My friends have been dried into chips. My friends have been turned into hard little candies. What is my fate? I guess I'm going to die. Wouldn't that be interesting though? Instead of us just dying, we actually turn into something that other people use. It's pretty gruesome when you think about it. Sorry to end on that note. Oh, I just realized that I had penciled in eyebrows on this guy and I completely forgot to put the eyebrows on him. So he has no eyebrows now, which is fine. His eyes are still very expressive. I like this packaging, so we're gonna go with this Chip Star Lemon Chips. Interesting. Salty and lemon chips are something I never knew I needed. These are pretty good. So for this snack, I definitely took inspiration from their Pringle shape where people can make a duck face by putting the two chips together like you saw Sock Casey do. So I took inspiration for a duck from that, and I also took inspiration from the fact that they are lemon flavored chips, which holy cow, if you ever have access to lemon flavored chips, I would highly recommend. I really love lemon and citrus, but I had no idea that it would go so well with a salty chip and Pocky, but it really does. It, it's so good, you guys. So for this illustration, I took this duck and I did another slice up of it. So it is turning into slices of duck and then lemon, and then it turns into a lemon. It's just a very simple concept that I had a lot of fun with. And I brought back the purple lines because I don't want to completely ditch my colored lines. Though this really makes me want to buy a variety of smaller nibbed Posca pins so that I can line with other colors other than black because the thick purple one is a little thick. And I really want to line with other colors than just black, but man, they're just so thick. Okay, these melons are very tempting, so let's go ahead and grab them. 
We have Melon Bread Cookies Party Pack. One is original crunchy flavor and the other is cream filled, which tastes way much more like melon. I'm a fan of the regular crunchy flavor. So I was really excited going into this design because I think those cookies are freaking adorable. They taste really good and they're just so tiny and cute compared to the big melon bread you normally see. I also really like the colors, yellow and green. I thought it would be fun. But honestly, you guys, this is probably one of the most disappointing doodles I did. I just couldn't get anything to look right. But here we have a melon bread being cute and silly and just kind of posing with a melon sitting on top of it and they're just kind of like, ta-da. And honestly, that's about it. I really don't know why I couldn't get anything out that I wanted, but as you can see, like I mentioned earlier, I'm just kind of putting eyeballs on the objects. And if you haven't noticed, converse are also a very common theme for me. I just love how simple and cute those shoes are. I can't help it. Our next inspiration will be this fruit granola black thunder. A fruity granola bar covered in chocolate? Yes, please. So the main inspiration for this doodle was the fact that fruit was being covered in chocolate. So I thought it would be fun to have a character being doused in chocolate, I guess. And I did want to keep it a sort of fruit themed because it was a fruit granola. So I made a banana themed dog because that made sense. I mean, nothing in this doodle really makes sense, but I had a lot of fun with the bright yellow and the orange of the dog and covering it in chocolate because why the heck not? Drawing those gloopy, drippy blobs was a lot of fun and having this dog just so into it. I have no idea what's going on. Do I ever know what's going on in my illustrations? Probably not. In the end, this dog ended up looking a lot like Scooby-Doo for me, so that's a little sad. One thing I will say is that it was a lot of fun making its legs look very stupid. I mean, just look at the anatomy of those legs and try to figure it out. It's just so stupid, and I love doing things like that with my art. Overall, a good pup. Next up is this little guy, Fruit Donut Gummy. A fruity sour gummy donut that tastes like soap, yet is kind of good. <laughs> so looking at the package, they were very enthusiastic about some kid holding a tray with a donut and fruit, which at first when I thought about it, I was like, ew, a fruit donut, that doesn't make any sense. But honestly, it, it's just a pastry and you can put fruit on pie and cake. And sometimes you have donuts filled with fruity jelly. So I don't know why I thought that was kind of weird. Either way, the illustration is based off of the fact that it's a fruit donut. So I drew a donut with eyeballs, because as you know, the theme of this video seems to be putting eyeballs on objects and also shoes. Yep, it's wearing shoes. We, we ticked off all the marks. So I just put a bunch of fruit on the top of this donut and focused on it being a more pastel drawing. I have three sets of Posca pins and one of them is a pastel pack. So I thought it'd be really fun to make a pastel drawing. And it's cute, I like it. It's very colorful and soft and delicious. Our drink of this package is Coca-Cola Clear, which apparently has a lemony flavor to it. I'm not sure what to think about this flavor. It's just kind of a subtle citrusy soda flavor. Very subtle. Like there's barely any flavor there but it's zero calories, so maybe that's why. So at the beginning of this video, when I said, ooh, things are gonna get wild, we're just gonna doodle away with my Posca pins, I later thought, yeah, Casey, huh, yeah, you're so cool, things are gonna get wild. No, they're not, because you just draw pretty cute, basic things. And then I got to this illustration, where my main inspiration was the fact that it was clear. So I wanted to create a character that was see-through. I wanted to start with a circle in the background and then play around with the fact that you can see that circle through the character. And then I thought, what if this character was just this weird blob thing? What if this character had fruit inside of it? Basically, this character is borderline nightmare fuel. If I change the face just a little bit from it being kind of goofy and cute to even slightly disturbing, it would probably give me nightmares because just the weird shape of its legs 
and it not having feet or hands. The fact that that pink kind of looks like muscle. Overall, this character design really freaks me out, but the little fruits are cute, so I guess it has that going for it. <laughs> Our next inspiration tucked away in here. Oh, Disney Tsum Tsum Chocolate Bar. It looks like a log, which is really cute, but it's just a wafer chocolate snack. So like I said, it looks like a log of chocolate, which is where I got my main inspiration from. And honestly, this might be my favorite drawing yet. I don't do a lot of background illustrations with my Posca pins because I just find it so hard to get detail with these fat nibs. And I just don't think I have quite enough experience with the Posca pins yet, though I think I'm getting there because I wanted to push myself with a background for at least one of these. And that first mushroom guy didn't really count. So I played around with someone sitting on a log and I also really wanted to play around with warm colors because I have a tendency, I think, to use more cool colors when it comes to Posca pins. And I also wanted to play around with a different colored sky because I'm always making my skies blue. So we have a warm sunset. We've got yellow grass for the fall, which it is now. And I also wanted to play around with the angle because I'm always drawing things from straight on. And although this isn't an extreme angle or anything, it's a slight angle from sort of below and from the side. And there's a little bit of perspective there, which is unusual for me, but I'm very glad that I did try something new. And I really, really like this illustration. Plus her white dress really pops off of those colors. Overall, love it. This is Shimi Corn Share Pack, chocolate flavor. I am definitely a fan of these chocolatey corn snacks, but I won't be sharing. Nope. So as you can see, I could not stay away from designing characters based off of these snacks. This is yet another character design. I just really love designing characters based off of snacks. So I was feeling a lot of sort of 70s vibes from this snack and also its packaging. It has a brown, a yellow, and it had green on the package, but I ended up using purple because I'm such a sucker for purple and the purple really complemented the yellow. So because I was getting a sort of 70s vibe, I gave them these wide-legged pants and a very bright, colorful shirt that is open and exposing their chest hair. I do, however, think my favorite part of this whole illustration is the little star snack that I drew. The brown with the purple and then a darker purple and then the black dots, it just looks so good, I think. I don't know why, it kind of has this slight 3D effect. Also, as you can see, this is another illustration where I struggled with not adding the line art, but I think in the end, it really just brought it together adding the line art. It needed it. And last but not least, we have our DIY melon jelly drink DIY. Adorable. If you like melon and jelly, this is the drink for you, but it's not for me. <laughs> so I hate to end this video on such a sad note, but this is the worst illustration out of the batch. Again, it's another one of those illustrations where I really wanted to create something cute because of those melons. I think something holding me back with the melon illustrations is the fact that I didn't have really good colors for melon. I only have two greens, a lime green and a regular green, and melon is sort of not those colors. I needed a yellowy green and I just, I didn't have it. So I copped out and I drew one of my original characters, Dennis, drinking that melon drink. And Dennis is normally a black panda, but I wanted to play around with how colorful the Posca pins are and so I went ahead and made him purple and I tried to do lineless again. I didn't think it worked so I added lines hoping that it would save the illustration but I still I hate it and that's that. Thank you all so much for watching my 14 snack inspired illustrations with my Posca pins. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you want your own Tokyo Treat box, click the link in the description to help this channel out. And thank you to Tokyo Treat for sending me a box. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. And now a huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons, including Michael Yun, Zach Abstract, Megan, Chris Side, Davey Tomato, Cool Guy Josh, Hey Lucy, Mackenzie, Maureen A, Pie, Drizzle, Cindy J, TJ Dutch, Star, 
Lex CS, Meredith H, Hattie Laird, Stuff by Dell, Zoe Stardust, One-Eyed Doe, and Antimeral Scott. If you want a shout out at the end of my videos, sketches, coloring pages, early access, and more, check out my Patreon by clicking the link in the description. Thank you all so much for the support. Bye!